New woman rising. That is like the new vibration that we're bringing to the earth so that we can actually encourage women to like what? The new women rising. Because we want to know, we want to be empowered, we want to be knowledgeable. Within the new woman rising paradigm, we do two things. It's a two-pronged program. And I shouldn't even say program because my daughter has corrected me and said it's an institution or a movement. The idea is so that women understand about their gender-specific issues. When you go to get your checkup, you want to make sure they cover like from head, like the edge of your hair follicles from here up, all the way to your toes and then some. Okay? Because we are the birth givers. We are the backbone, the spine of the planet. We are the backbone of the planet. And if your back is out of alignment, I'm like feeling what I'm seeing. Because again, if you don't have proper body alignment, you're going to have issues. If you're not keeping your body properly hydrated with proper fluids, you're going to have an issue. If you're keeping your body exposed to external stimuli that people might try to say is natural and herbal, but not necessarily the best for you, you're going to have some issues. I think I said that delicately. I'm working on saying delicate. Delicate is the term, right? What are some key things that we do with women's health? We deal with getting your body, your mind, your spirit, your consciousness in alignment. Okay, let me go back. The body, the mind, the spirit, the soul, and consciousness. So that means we're doing five things. We always talk about the four elements, air, fire, earth, and water. And some people forget the diffusion. Some people call it ether. But for the purposes of this discussion and the sharing, we'll say spirit. Because that's what brings it all together. So if you don't get involved in proper breathing, and that's something that we can do right here, right now. Why is this so important to women's health? The lack of proper breath destroys the entire balancing system of our womb. And you'll hear me speak of our womb universe. Not universe. Our womb universe. Because this is our center. And if you're not breathing properly, you're going to have issues in the brain. Your palms will begin to give you some issues that you would not even like me to begin to describe. You understand? Your thought processes will be interfered with. You understand? And that's just breathing. If you're not doing some kind of engaging exercise, at least 20 to 25 minutes a day. And I'm not saying like that, the walk to the refrigerator, the walk to the kitchen. I'm not talking about that kind of exercise. I mean like some aerobic, engaging breathing where you get a, at least a little bit of sweat. And if you have a choice, we live in the pristine Virgin Islands. That sometimes we do not reflect on the importance of our thoughts. If you are eating food, it could be the most vegan, natural, organic, purified food in the world. But if you have vexation and anger and rage and envy like up in your vibration, for whatever reason, let me justify it, I guess. But if you get in that zone, what will begin to happen, it will turn into acid inside of your body system. Some people really have indigestion because of their brain and the thoughts. So I always encourage people, if you're really vexed, angry, or under some kind of extensive stress, don't come with the, well, I have to eat or I go have gas. That's not acceptable. And you're lying to your body system, okay? The best thing for you to do, and I'm sure we all know it, begins with the letter F, let's work on that together, fast. And I'm not saying do a 92-day fast without some kind of supervision. I want to make sure that I say that. I say this to my clients, my customers, and my children. Because as young as I look, I have six children I birthed, nine that I raised. I want to be very clear. And I now have seven grandchildren. I'm saying that because I encourage anyone that's dealing with wellness, anyone that's talking about health and holistic, alternative, transitional, integrative medicine, whatever it is, Keep it simple. See, what happens is when we start trying to rearticulate the philosophical concepts of the foundations of creation of all the things that need to be involved in holistic health and healing. And then you have clients that are like, when they leave from you, they feel good, but they can't replicate what you did with them for the last two hours. 
So then they end up coming to you a lot more than what is really required if in fact we're dealing with holistic wellness and transitional engagement and care. So that was the fourth piece. We want to keep things simple. The fifth piece that's always been fun for me is the eating part. Now, as quiet as it's kept, I like to eat. Okay, I'm just very finicky about what I like to eat. So I'm always encouraging individuals, those people that want to go from being like a full-fledged carnivore that eats nothing that's from the you know, plant kingdom, do not try to be a vegetarian tomorrow because your liver is going to scream. Your spleen will probably just want to just go like atrophy because it's like it just fixes up, okay? Your respiratory system is going to go into a bend primarily because you are no longer giving it the type of substance that your body has grown accustomed to. So you want to do things gradual. It's good to use a season, season meaning 90 days or so, something in there. Some people say 84, 42 twice, whatever. Something that's around like a season. You know, so maybe you'll use the spring season, since we do a lot of cleansing around that time, there's a lot of holy engagements around that time. I'm being very blunt and honest because this is one of the things that happens with women, especially women in their childbearing years. They want to know how come they have morning sickness, they want to know how come they have cramping, they want to know how come their babies either end up getting cut out or taken out or they're half, you know, out of their mind when they're delivering their children. It has a lot to do with where your mental capacity lies and how you are dealing with your daily nutritional intake. You really want to focus on how you prepare your body to deal with the transition for health and wellness. The sixth piece that's always been very interesting for most people is looking at how do you deal with spiritual relations. And I want to make sure I make this very clear. I'm not speaking of religion, but I'm speaking of the things that keep your moral values, life practice traditions in place. You may have heard Sister Short refer to me as a naturopathic therapist. And I want to explain a little bit about that. We say in turn. And in turn means that what you're working on doing is following a natural transformational rhythm on a daily basis. Notice the key buzz, rhythm, harmony. And the seventh thing, which is always the part that people get kind of quiet on, is reflective introspection. I'm curious, how many of us do a talk fast while we're awake? Sometimes it's very, very important to use that time so that you can really deal with some introspection. Regardless of what your spiritual, religious engagements are, whatever that is, do those affirmations, those prayers, those, those meditations, those hesies, those chants on a daily basis. Whatever types of healing modalities that you are engaged in, make sure that you do them on a regular basis. It's really cute to go and get a massage, but if you're only gonna do it like once a year, then your body will not be able to get the full embrace of the healing from it because it's not something that happens like one time. It's something that you need to be doing on a regular basis. So we wanna go over these things when we talk about what, how does this relate to New Woman Rising. One of the key highlights of New Woman Rising is that we're encouraging integrated healthcare. We're encouraging holistic wellness so that it can be able to permeate through every part of your existence, your life, your engagement. So we're encouraging people to deal with exercise, to deal with hydrotherapy, water therapy. We're encouraging people to clean themselves out orally and when it's required, get the colonics. If you need an enema, don't be afraid. It's not anything that's, because if you messed up going this way, then you need to clean it up the other side. Because that way you're giving your body, assist, your body systems an opportunity to heal as quickly as possible. People that are actually starving, but actually eat every day, did you get that? People will have three square meals a day and their bodies are still starving nutritionally. And that has impacted on women specifically because we're, all, we're nurturers and we're givers and we're caretakers. Right, and that engaging your heart, engaging your lungs, and keeping your mind consciousness in that space that some people regard as nirvana, 
that some people regard as never a tomb, that some people just regard as bliss, you're missing out tremendously on like a good 75% of the fabulous episode of the journey of being human.